It was September 11, 2001, early in the morning. While the rest of the world was sleeping, the United States was unknowingly about to experience one of the greatest tragedies in modern history. In the meantime, Southeast Asia's Myanmar had already seen a hesitant sun. Before returning to the mountainous jungles, a group of scientists were taking a brief break. Their mission was to find and analyze as many new species as possible snakes, plants, insects, and birds. Myanmar's ecosystem is magnificent. However, September 11 turned out to be a historic day for the entire world. The expedition's leader, Joseph Lewinsky, reached into a specimen bag and pulled out what appeared to be a harmless snake. A different, more personal kind of tragedy was about to happen. We'll look at Joseph's fatal collision with what he most cherished in this video, and his friend's frantic efforts to keep him alive. In 1997, Joseph made his first trip to Myanmar. Joseph was a distinguished herpetologist, a scientist who studies amphibians and reptiles. In 2000, at the age of 38, the man's accomplishments were already extraordinary. Having published over 40 articles with peer review and one book. Primarily, he was a nature enthusiast with a preference for serpents. In fact, he specialized in the analysis of the LAPD, the most poisonous snakes in existence. Corals, serpents, cobras, crates, and mambas are all members of this particular snake family and Joseph Slowinski loved them despite or perhaps because of their tiny, lethal teeth. The 38-year-old scientists had always been fascinated by scaly, cold-blooded creatures. Joseph viewed snakes as beautiful and fascinating, whereas the vast majority of people are repulsed and terrified by them. Nonetheless, he was well aware of how hazardous they were, while he was never careless when handling the scaly creatures. The herpetologist was well aware that even the tiniest bite could be fatal. He loves snakes regardless. His preoccupation with animals began when he was quite young. Other children may have favored kittens. But Joseph was more interested in reptiles. At age 5, he began catching frogs and small snakes. And at age 15, he was bitten by a rattlesnake in Nebraska. Since then, he has taken a particular interest in poisonous snakes. He began his long academic career as a herpetologist for this reason. Even though he was a biology professor for a time, he was first and foremost a man of action with a bubbly, enthusiastic personality. The man did not wish to spend his entire life analyzing and writing academic papers in a laboratory. Instead, he excelled at conducting scientific field research, where he could experience any ecosystem and observe his favorite animals in their natural habitat. At the age of 38, Joseph, a herpetologist with the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco, had combed the United States, Mexico, Peru, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Jamaica, and the Bahamas in search of new and exciting snake species. However, it was Myanmar, the Southeast Asian nation formerly known as Burma, where a rational paradise was discovered. The biodiversity hotspot of Southeast Asia, Myanmar is home to some of the largest intact natural ecosystems in Southeast Asia. Since his first expedition to the jungles in 1997, the man had discovered 18 new species of reptiles. Nothing could stand in their way. His dedication to his field of study is exemplified by the long tongs he used to capture snakes and the pleasure he derived from contributing to science. When Joseph finally assembled a multidisciplinary team of about 10 academics, he gave them fair warning. This will likely be one of the most difficult tasks you have ever undertaken, he told his team. As it turned out, he was correct because the lack of funds had caused a delay. The expedition began later than originally scheduled. Nevertheless, the expedition departed. The team was comprised of former solar, wind, and ski students, as well as herpetologists, ornithologists, entomologists, and Burmese students. As the journey progressed, the scientists moved further and further from civilization and into the jungle. The weather was dreadful, it rained continuously. There were rivulets running through the sticky mud, which made each step arduous, especially considering that the plan was to climb above 10,000 feet each day while analyzing a wide variety of habitats. Animals that are extremely intriguing. All kinds of animals, including snakes and frogs, were captured and thoroughly examined. The photographer of the expedition, who was also one of Lewinsky's closest friends, captured breathtaking images of the creatures. Every night, the catch of the day and dreams, worries, and desires were discussed. Then, on September 11, 2001,
the entire world shook. It was approximately 7 a.m. when one of the Burmese field assistants, Bruce Lewinsky, brought in a specimen bag containing a snake. Although various accounts of what was said that morning have since surfaced, the general consensus is that the field assistants informed Joseph that he had been bitten by a member of that species the previous day. According to reports, the man did not know the snake's exact species, but believed it to be non-venomous. Slowinski reached into the bag with his bare hand without giving it a second thought, despite his many years of experience in well-developed safety practices. Then he felt a tiny bite and looked down to see a one-foot-long, pencil-thin snake that resembled the multi-banded crate nearly identically. It was simple to comprehend the Burmese field assistant's error. However, the biting snake was not a mimic. It was actually a crate, a particularly poisonous snake. Instantaneously, the herpetologist realized the truth. He did not, however, lose hope. In any case, this was not his first experience with a poisonous snake. He had previously been bitten by a cobra, but it had been a dry bite, one without venom. Moreover, there was the incident involving a cobra that spat. A year had passed since the snake injected venom into Joseph's eyes. He would have gone blind in a matter of hours if not for the natives of Burma and their traditional treatments. Joseph remained optimistic, at least on the surface. When the snake bit him, he looked for bite marks, but he couldn't find any. He ate breakfast with his team while making jokes. When he awoke from his nap around 8 a.m., he noticed a tingling sensation in his arm. Being a subject matter expert, the man recognized that the unusual sensation was undoubtedly bad news. Crate venom contains powerful neurotoxins. Their initial dreadful effect is a loss of motor skills. Fifteen minutes after he noticed the tingling, two helpers equipped with a radio were dispatched to the nearest town. Myanmar prohibited satellite cell phones for use in calling for assistance, and the team had not received the radio phone promised by government officials. According to multiple accounts provided by team members, Joseph Slowinski then gathered his team around him and provided a detailed explanation of what would happen to him. Each of his predictions was accurate. First, Joseph's breathing became more labored. He required an upward reach to open his eyelids. His head eventually began to draw. His articulation became slurred. Then he was unable to speak at all. Instead, he sent messages requesting support for his head and advising the team to adjust its position. If I vomit, he wrote, the outcome could be negative. Then, his diaphragm failed before he lost his voice. He told them that they would have to breathe for him if he were to survive. After 48 hours, he informed them that the neurotoxins may have left his system by 3 p. M. The support personnel returned with bad news. The Myanmar military required additional information before dispatching a rescue helicopter. Heavy precipitation rendered it impossible for the pilots to land the helicopter, so they gave up. Soldiers and a doctor arrived on foot, but the respirator they brought was antiquated and inoperable. Instead, in an astounding display of humanity, the team took turns breathing for their mentor throughout the night. They did so for 26 hours the following day. Beginning at 12.25 on September 12, Tos of so-and-so had no longer a pulse. The team began CPR for three hours without success. When the helicopter was finally able to touch down, it was obviously too late to save the renowned herpetologist. As requested by his family, his body was cremated and his ashes were flown back to San Francisco.